Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another day of Kit Conspiracy, which I'm combining today with Mixed Media Mayhem and our Mixed Media Mayhem inspiration piece this week comes from Angelica De Bruyne and normally we, well not normally, we go back and forth between recipes and inspiration pieces. This week we are using this piece with all these fabulous circles on it. So I am going to mimic it by taking this orange paper. Uh, this was actually probably the f one of the first layouts that I did using the Good Vibrations collection because I knew I wanted to use the circles and the flowers. So I wanted to get that done um, first so that I didn't use up more of the supplies that I had than um, more supplies than I had available. Does that make sense? So I didn't use the stuff that I needed for Friday on Monday through Thursday, basically. So I did this one first um, and I went ahead and used the circle dies that you see on the right hand side, the top set, which is from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm not even sure those are available anymore. If they are, I'll put a link down below, but uh, there's <laughs> no guarantee because um, I've had them in my stash for quite a while. They have more options than the other set, which is from Sizzix, and I don't know if those are available either, but any dies would work. You could also use circle punches. You could also take some different elements from your kitchen, your measuring measuring cups maybe, or t teacups or whatever, and draw a circle. You could use your um, circle cutters from Creative Memories or any company that you have purchased a circle cutter from like Fiskars or whatever and make varying sized circles. So um, I did go through and rough up my circles, my large circles anyway. I didn't, I didn't rough up um, the floral ones, but the other ones are roughed up with my distress tool from MK's shop. And it is the most fabulous distress tool ever. <laughs> I have a little tiny one that's a just a little bit larger than a quarter. That's really hard to use, and it makes makes it very frustrating for me to do distressing. And I never, I never really enjoyed the process. But since I got the one from MK, it's amazing. Um, and I thought I had lost it for a while, and I actually ordered myself another one. But then I found the one, the original one, and I I ended up getting some of the rare earth magnets, and I adhered one to the back. And now it sticks to the side of my Rascog cart so I don't lose it. And I'm super happy with that solution because it just is perfect. It's right there within reach and uh, I always know where it's at. So um, you can't see the magnet on it. It's on the back side of what, what you're seeing on my desk. Anyway, I am working on getting my little circles placed here. They're not going to be the exact placement that are in, that's in the inspiration piece. I'm going to move them around to fit my needs just a little bit better. Um, if you're wondering about the photos, that is me in the tub. Um, and that's my mom giving me a bath. And there are, there's nothing showing in this photo that shouldn't be showing. Uh, everything's pretty much covered. So, um, but I thought they were super cute photos and this particular collection just happens to match whatever it is that my mom's wearing or what her top. I don't know if it's um, just a shirt or a robe or whatever, but it matches perfectly. And so I was like, I'm just going to go with it and I add these floral clusters and I really like how it looks. I am adding a little bit of foam to the pieces that are going to be lifted up or that are on top of the photos. Also, everything is just really stuck together. It's not stuck to the background because I want to still do my mixed media on there. So I kind of um, thoughtfully placed my adhesive so that I would be able to lift the entire piece up. And now I'm going back over it with a little bit of tattered rose distress oxide ink. And I'm going pretty subtle. I'm not, I'm not doing a lot of, uh, like large coverage. I'm just going, so it's peeking out from behind the entire cluster that I've got going on. And I thought about putting some in the upper corner. You can see I kind of hesitated there in the inspiration piece. She's got stuff in the upper left and bottom right hand corners to complete like a diagonal design. And I just decided I didn't really want to do that. I didn't have anything that I needed to put up in that corner. I want to keep it all centrally located. And so I, I really 
I would say I really quickly made that decision, but you saw me kind of hemming and hawing there about whether I was going to add any mixed media to the corner, and I did not decide to do that. So I'm happy with the way that this looks. Now she's got a bunch of stamp stamping going on, and so I'm going to pull out these stamps. These are um, Art by Marlene from Studio, Studio something. Um, yeah, I can't remember the name, but... Um, <laughs> I will put a link down below for you if they are still available. I've had these for quite some time and this is actually not even the complete set. This is only half the set because um, one of my dear friends, Janie, accidentally bought two sets. And so uh, my friend Lynn and I split her second set between the two of us, which was nice because uh, it gave us both a little sampling of um mixed media stamps. Now what I'm doing here is I am inking up my stamp set and then stamping it off the first time behind the photos and then the second time I'm doing the like a second generation stamping so it's not as bold. Now this stamping is going to be pretty bold. Um, that first bit of stamping using the dots I used the honey mustard ink pad from Gina K and now I am using I believe this is called Spiced from Catherine Pooler. And I think I'm going to show, I'm going to hold this up in a bit if I didn't already. Um, so yeah, oh, there it is, Spiced. And then I'm going to also use the Ginger one. So there's the Honey Mustard one. That's the little dots. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of that Tattered Rose to do this plus mark, which is very similar to the hash mark that I've got going on with the stenciling. But the stenciling is a lot more subtle than the stamping. And so I like uh, the mixture of the two and I think it looks really kind of neat and different. And then I've got uh, from this same Art by Marlene set, there's these hearts that are, um, one is upside down next to a or sandwiched in between two right side up ones and then it's got like a sketchy line down the middle um, and I'm stamping those in ginger and now I'm going to work on my title I am using some dies oh my goodness I can't even I don't even know who these dies are from um, I'm going to have to look it up but I believe they're from Sizzix um, not 100% sure on that Again, I'll try to put the link down below for you for that. And my title is just going to be Love. Now, in her title, she does have some um, twine or fiber or um, embossing. No, not embossing. Oh, my goodness. Why am I draw drawing a blank? Um, embroidery floss. <laughs> embroidery floss wrapped around her letters and so I'm going to do that as well but I wanted to darken up my letters so I'm just rubbing loosely over the top of them with this honey mustard stamp not full coverage just making them a little darker and I chose the honey mustard one because it is lighter than the ginger and spiced ones and it is uh, not as juicy it is a different kind of pad it's the the like the felt pad versus the Catherine Pooler ones are foam pads and they're super juicy. And so I didn't want them. I didn't want my letters to soak in quite as much ink. So I just kind of almost like dry brushed my ink pad right over the top to give them a little bit of um, depth of color. So now I'm using some Baker's twine that is brown and white. And I am, what I did was I put a line of ATG on the back side to kind of hold everything in place. And I am just wrapping it around. Once I get it wrapped around, I'll put a little liquid glue on it on each of the ends. And then I will uh, put it between my tweezers and set it aside to dry while I work on the next one. So that's how I attached them. I'm not sure how she did it, but I'm also going to use a little bit of foam to help support the letters underneath the area that doesn't have the Baker's twine on it because um, it definitely needs something there because the Baker's twine is quite thick. This is not the thinnest Baker's twine I've ever seen. Um, and so it definitely needs a little bit of uh extra added support around the rest of the letter and that's going to be provided by the foam which I'm just using fun foam or kids craft foam from Walmart that is adhesive backed on one side and cut into little tiny strips um, I cut it into strips it didn't come that way from Walmart it comes in like a five by seven sheet or something but it comes in a whole stack of them so that is what I typically use um, I do have other foam in my stash that sometimes I use uh, as well but 
uh, that's what I'm going to be using today. So there I've got my letters. I really like how that's looking. Um, pretty happy with how dark they are, but um, you know, they're not like a solid brown. Um, I rarely ever use cardstock other than white, black, and on an occasion, cream or craft. So I don't really have any in my stash. I really like the way that this, the patterned paper picked up the ink. And anytime I really want to say make a photo mat or something like that, that is the same color as um, one of the papers or something, I will just use my ink pad around the edges of it to make it the right color to suit my needs. Um, other than that, I don't really use it for backgrounds or anything. So that that's my, my answer to cardstock. Uh, I would rather purchase a patterned paper that reads like a solid, kind of like the orange circles on here that have the white uh, hash marks on them. Uh, even though that is definitely not a solid, but uh, tone on tone patterns are great for that. And I, I really enjoy that. So that's kind of what I go for rather than a, a plain cardstock. So now I'm just using liquid glue. I'm using Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. I'm also using my uh, T-square ruler to make sure I get my letters nice and straight across the page. And I'm liking how that's looking. I will set my acrylic block right on the top of them uh, when I'm done getting them placed so that it just holds everything in place while I work on the rest. Um, Oh, I thought I set my acrylic block on it, but maybe I didn't. Um, anyway, I think I did. And I just cut that part out because it, it just sat there for a little while because I didn't, I didn't want to mess it up. Um, so now I'm adding this label over to the side and that's going to have the date on it. And then in her layout, uh, Angelica put a, but a bit of stitching. So that circular black thing on my desk is a foam mouse pad. And I just used a piercing tool that is really old. It's an old Amy Tangerine piercing tool. And I just created a square of holes. And then I am just doing an X, like an X type of a stitch. I don't know what that's called <laughs> other than an X. Now I started out with this kind of yellowy color, buttery yellow color, but I end up going back and taking that out and going back over it with the same color that I put over the letters. And so I'm going to use the Baker's twine instead. It is a bit thicker. And so it takes me a little bit to get through those holes, especially on the second time you have to go through the hole. Um, but it does work out in the end. And I really like how it looks. And this is not the only area I did. This is the only area I'm showing you. But there is some underneath the leaves of that pink flower in the bottom left hand corner of the layout. And then um, right to the left of my mom's head in that upper photo on that circle circular piece there. So you will see that better in the close ups. So uh, you can be on the lookout for that if that's something that's important to you. So I'm really liking how that looks. I will take a bit of um, washi tape just to adhere the ends of it down on the back of my layout. And then I'm taking a brown fine tip Sharpie and going around the entire layout with two sketchy lines just to finish it off and to frame it. And I really like how that looks. It just adds to uh, the pattern of the stamping with the browns and um, peachy pink, peachy colors, I guess is what they are. Uh, and I think that just finishes it off nicely. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have questions or comments, let me know. I forgot to tell you, there is a playlist down below of everyone who is playing along with Mixed Media Mayhem. There is also a link to our Facebook group for Kit Conspiracy. If you are interested in joining us over there, uh, we are using the same kit all week. Uh, MK and I have identical kits and it's always fun to see what the two of us do differently. And uh, so you can go and check out her channel. Also, there is a link below for her channel as well so that you can find that easily. Thanks so much for spending time with me, you guys. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys again with another layout soon. Bye-bye.